Dana White, not only does he commit acts of DV on New Year's Eve in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, at an establishment called Squid Row and have the likes of Stephen A. Smith come to his defense on ESPN. He also hates a certain... Oh, that's B! He hates me, but I'm not alone. He accomplished a lot of great things in boxing. Outside of the ring, the guy is an absolute loser. He's a liar and many other things. And I can't tell you, maybe you can tell, how much I despise this human being, but um, that's the only reason that I'm even doing this. This is it. It's the last time. And then here we are again, you know? Yet this guy keeps opening his big yeah. He's speaking of the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. Now, Oscar recently sat down with Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay and said this, quote, when a guy slaps his wife in public, you know when his mom writes a book about him saying that he is a douche, his own mom, that's all I have to say. I don't have to say anything more. Hmm. So how did all of this start? Well, it depends who you ask. Oscar De La Hoya is two-faced. He's a liar. Total phony. Mm -hmm. Whatever my personal things are with De La Hoya, De La Hoya was a bad boy mm -hmm. with his career and everything else. Um, you know, I respect that. I respect what Oscar De La Hoya did in the as ring. As a fighter. Now, like I told you, I respected Oscar as a fighter. Right. Whatever we met, we were cool. He came to some UFCs. I'd be at home. He'd have a fight on. I'd promote his fight on my social media or whatever. We'd do Mayweather McGregor. And he oh. starts and said, telling people, do not buy this fight. This, is, this fight is a disgrace to boxing, blah, blah. But I'll fight Conor McGregor. Right. And then, and then he comes back and says, ah, oh, I want to patch things up with Dana. We will never be friends. In that Shea Shea interview, De La Hoya gave a different story. We were cool, he says, of the relationship with White. When I first thought about getting into MMA, I strongly felt that he just wanted to bury me, not have competition. He started talking blank about me. We're in different sports. He does his thing. I do mine. Just because I wanted to start a little competition, he gets all, let me scream louder. You know, here's that reference. Per MMA mania, De La Hoya did make what they call a failed attempt at branching out into mixed martial arts with a Golden Boy Promotions card headlined by former UFC legends Tito Ortiz and Chuck Liddell in a trilogy bout in the year 2018. They would write, it's better we forget that one though. Meanwhile, Dana White has always teased a boxing side project but claimed it never got off the ground because of how much of a mess boxing is as a whole. This would also be a wedge issue that he would develop by pinning and making a rivalry out of boxing and MMA for the record. On Chuck Liddell, White would offer this. Uh, I'm sure he wants to fight, but should you fight? You know, the, 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 uh, the California State Athletic Commission should have never even sanctioned that fight. On that card, De La Hoya saw it and went on those same airwaves to blast the UFC president. Um, look, and, and I mean, fighters like, like, uh, like Chuck Liddell and, and, uh, and Tito Ortiz, uh, you know I mean? They're still fighting at 40 some odd years old. Well, then pay them better so they won't have to fight, you know? I mean, Chuck Liddell comes to me and tells me, look, I, I, want, I, I want to fight. I, I want to make big money. Well, guess what? He made big money in this event that I put on, not that, not that Dana White did. So White would see this on Get Up and say of De La Hoya that he is lying. In 2018, after the bout between Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz, White, per the Post, unloaded his frustration on De La Hoya, who has frequently discussed his issues with substance abuse and has sought treatment at rehabilitation clinics. I heard last week the coke had Oscar De La Weirdo very Trumpian, is talking blank that I don't have any place to tell guys when to retire, Dana would say. It's called friendship. It's friendship, you blank cokehead. I've been friends with Chuck Liddell for 20 years, and the reality is Chuck Liddell retired when he should have retired eight or nine years ago. White would add this. When I asked Chuck to retire, he didn't want to either. He should have retired when he did and stayed retired, but like the cokehead said, Chuck's a grown man and can do whatever he wants to do. But that's when the state of California has to step in and save him from, his, from himself. Rather, Dana would continue on the topic of fighter pay, how he bests De La Hoya. Though, 
Tito Ortiz would weigh in and put that to bed on Instagram in a now deleted post. Ortiz wrote, when you sold the company for over $4.5 billion, how much of that did Chuck and I get nothing? I want it to be about the fighters and giving them the opportunity to share in all the rewards this business has to offer to where they don't have to fight when they are 43 and 48. Here's how bad it got, though. In 2018, De La Hoya proposed fighting Dana White on Luke Thomas's show. He would say, quote, let's get in the ring, three rounds, let's do this. De La Hoya would go even further. I'll even give you five months or so. You can get off the juice, implying he takes steroids, I believe, and then we can get in great shape. And then we go three rounds. Look, I'm going to give you, what, a 50-pound advantage? It's okay. I could take you on. Let's do it. This came after White fired shots, which, in my view, uh, appears to be completely lost in this story. He would say, I hope somebody talks De La Hoya into fighting again. I hope the state of California makes the fight, and I hope he gets knocked out just like Chuck Liddell in the first round. Blink, cokehead, nutball, close quote. And listen, we can sit down and we can do this on TV. We can go head to head. We can also take drug tests if he wants to do that, too. Uh, I'm ready to go. Let's go, Oscar. You idiot. But just very quickly, if you have one final message here, if, if, if Oscar De La Hoya is watching, what is it you want him to know? Let's do it, idiot. Come on. Any show you want to, and I want to hear you stumble and bumble and mumble through, you know, trying to... He doesn't run the business. He knows nothing about the business. He knows nothing about the sport. And he's not very bright. So let's do it. Any, any day of the week, let's do it. And let's do drug tests, too. I want to do that, too. So in 2021, we fast forward here. De La Hoya would have a bout scheduled with UFC legend Vitor Belfort in a boxing match. He'd pull out because he contracted the coronavirus. Dana White would mock him on Instagram. Remember, this was that card on September 11th when many ripped into Donald Trump because instead of doing something presidential, He took money to go be part of a broadcast team for a company that has been in serious trouble called Triller. Belfort's opponent, after De La Hoya would pull out because of COVID, was former champion champion Evander Holyfield. And, I mean, talk about a wash. Talk about a fight that never should have happened. That's what it was. Thus, De La Hoya would respond to the crap talking from White. That's all you got, Dana? You're accusing me of faking a virus that's killed almost 700,000 Americans to avoid a fight? Those death totals at the time. You pathetic piece of blank. You've never even laced up the gloves, and you completely ignored my original post I made about underpaying fighters. After De La Hoya made comments about Alexander Volkanovsky, White would respond with this, Don't worry about Volkanovsky, you clown. He has a team of very intelligent, sophisticated people behind him, and he's clearly doing very well for himself. If he needs to buy an eight ball, then maybe he will reach out to you for some guidance. White would not stop there, though. It's no secret you're a liar, drug addict, and all-around scumbag. It doesn't matter that you laced up gloves, and there's no doubt you accomplished big things in boxing. But out of the ring, you're an absolute blanking loser. In February of this year, De La Hoya would double down on fighting Dana White in a boxing ring on a potential undercard when Sean O'Malley of the UFC would fight a guy like, say, Ryan Garcia. Ryan can fight, you know, in the main event with this kid, and maybe I can do Dana <laughs> on the co-main. I thought you guys are cool. Didn't you, like, say, like... No, you went... we're cool. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's all good. I mean, I don't know if we're cool. I mean, I haven't even talked to the guy. I know, but you, you put out a thing that you wanted yeah, to, no, like, good. bury the like, hatchet. I, like, I'm good. On Club Shay Shay. De La Hoya would also say this. What does he as in Dana talk about? The coke and the pantyhose? So what? 15 years ago? So what? And I don't have friends. It's absurd because I don't even think about it. Here's the thing business-wise. In 2024, both of them partnered with Riyadh Season to promote upcoming events. That will likely be the extent of their business practices going forward, potentially unless money is involved. What I would say is this. It's a budding rivalry that neither man wants to back down from. It doesn't really matter who you pick in this. What I would say is neither of them should be talking about fighter pay. 
because if Dana's numbers are accurate about what Golden Boy has paid their fighters in the past, he does not have a leg to stand on because he would give quotes saying they stole money from fighters. Dana White and his board at the UFC are stealing money from fighters every single day. And that is why he will always pivot away from fighters demanding, wanting to make more. And there's a reason why an antitrust case has been completely buried by UFC media is number one, they curry favors with Dana White. And number two, they don't want him picking on them and revoking their credential. So fighter pay, please stop. He'll say it continues to go up as it should, but it should be way more than that. We've reported on stories where some people made what could be deemed as a professional athlete peanuts while Dana White gets to keep the whole bag.